folks, I'm Rob Franick. I'm editor-in-chief here at the Princeton Review, and you are in for a treat today. I'm with my dear colleague and longtime friend, uh, Kent Reinhardt, who is the Dean of Admission uh, from Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm gonna uh, let Kent introduce himself to you. My name is Kent Reinhardt, Dean of Admission at Marist. Marist is a uh, medium-sized college of 5,000 undergraduate students located about an hour and a half outside of New York City, so we don't have the any of the aggravation of urban living. We have plenty of parking, it's safe, it's a, a beautiful area right on the banks of the Hudson River. Oh, but yeah. there are trains from Poughkeepsie down to Grand Central in New York City every hour. Students utilize that, that accessibility to the city for internships and uh, incredible networking opportunities as a part of the experience. Okay, how long have you been at Marist? So I have had the good fortune of being here for 20 years um, I was actually two stints. I had a few years back in the 90s, and then I came back in 06. Uh, yep. Before I was here, I was director of admission at Bentley University, just outside of Boston. How many students actually apply to Marist each year? You said so 5,000 undergraduates altogether. 5,000 undergraduates. We have about, 11, last year we had about 11,500 apply at a, from high school, and then we had about another 1,000 apply to transfer in from other two and four-year colleges. How many are admitted each each year? We admit about 5,000, somewhere okay. in that, that range, um, for our freshman class of about 1,300. So we admit just under 50%. Do you waitlist students? And if so, how many at, at Marist each year? So we do waitlist, and waitlist students are students that are are uh, academically capable of doing the work at Marist, yeah. uh, but unfortunately we just don't have enough space. We're in the enviable position that we have more students applying that can certainly do the work and, and be successful here, uh, but we just don't have enough space both in our residence, residential areas as well as our classroom. So we will put students on the wait list. So if out of the students we admit, if, if, we, if not enough of them choose Marist, then we always have a wait list of students that we can go to and offer them the opportunity to come to Marist. Often students think about the wait list, they say, oh, that's, you, you, I don't have any control. And in fact, students do have control. Students have the option to say, I don't wanna be on the wait list. I've decided I'm gonna go somewhere else. And that's that's really where the student has some control in, in the process. And certainly uh, if a student gets waitlisted, they need to start thinking about other options. Sure. But we do go to the wait list. Um, you know, last year we had about 3000 students that we offered spots on the wait list wow, okay, yeah. and about 1500 said yes i'll be on the wait list another 1500 said no i'm going to go somewhere else and that's that is a that's their prerogative and we support that and then uh then how many students we take off the wait list will really vary some years it's nearly zero other years it could be in the hundreds and so it really varies year to year do you think your numbers are going to change just from overall students that will be applying to Marist over the next year, just given the COVID-19 times that we're living in? You know, I think that there will be some changing of the numbers. I think that we will probably have fewer numbers of students applying to college, um, yeah. a, at least at a place like Marist. I think that one of the benefits we have is when students step on our campus as a, as a visitor in high school, in their junior year, their senior year, they're amazed at what we offer. They're amazed yeah. at our physical plan, the vibe, the community, and it really comes uh, comes to light when students step onto our campus. And it's really hard to replicate that in a virtual environment. So I think that our inability to have people hosted here on campus formally for several months uh, may impact our, our applicant pool. Um, may not, we'll see. I think it is gonna change how the college search process happens going forward though, absolutely. Some of my students that are nervous to talk in a regular face-to-face -face setting are the, are, are, are the most engaged in a virtual setting. Did you find that just in, 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 you know, with your either admitted student days or your open houses this summer as they are now virtual? We have found that um, when we get students in a, in a room, they're often nervous to ask a question, but you get yeah. them into a, a virtual chat room uh, then they're firing questions left and right. And so it's quite interesting, the, the dynamic there and, and where they find themselves comfortable. And um, so it's, it actually has empowered students, I think, in many ways, this virtual environment. They have, they have kind of taken the bull by the horns and, and become much more assertive in their, in their conversations with us, which is quite nice, actually. Yeah. Because we do this work because um, we love working with students. Now, I like parents, too but I really love working with students. So when a student calls us or a student sends us an email or a student 
raises their hand and says, I have a question. We love that. Percentage of students applying for financial aid each year and, and do you expect that to change in the next year given COVID? Yeah, so we get about, uh, out of the students who are applying for aid, about 90% apply for aid and 85% get financial aid from the college. Do I expect that to increase? I do. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the financial circumstances in the world are gonna are gonna cause more students to apply for aid. Is Marist a test optional school? Yeah, so we've been test optional for about a decade. Um, we just felt like we'd rather evaluate a student based on three and a half hour or three and a half years of high school than three and a right. half hours on a Saturday morning. So we've always been, uh, well, we've been test optional for, for over a decade. I think that, um, you know, in talking to students about tests, you know, if you can take a test, take the test. But by no means, uh, certainly in this environment, most colleges have now gone to test optional. So students, we understand that your ability to take the test or your your comfort in taking the test uh, may not be there. And you know, our job as admissions counselors is to be sensitive to that. And so if you wanna take the test, you should, but you shouldn't be traveling seven hours to try to find a place to take the test. If you don't feel safe going into a testing environment for, your, for health reasons or any other reasons, you shouldn't go. Kent, you're saying that uh, that you focus on different parts of the application. Given that some of those things have changed this year, if you were if a student was in high school, sometimes their class certainly their classes were letter grade generating before, but many students have now moved to pass fail. How, how will that play into your evaluation process uh, over the next year of time? You know, Rob, it's it's really interesting. We haven't had deep discussions about it, but I think okay. our job is to uh, really, when we're reading an application, we read an application, let's say for about 15 minutes. And in those 15 minutes, my job is to walk in the shoes of that student. Yeah. And so we try to understand your academic environment, your family environment, and certainly we're gonna wanna understand how uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic has impacted your life, either yeah. in your family or in academically. I think that we're gonna look at in the context of your life and what opportunities you've had and what opportunities you've taken advantage of. And we are never gonna uh, punish you or hold anything against you that you can't control. If your high school went to pass fail for, for this past spring, then yeah. that's, that's the way it is. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna blame an applicant for something like that. And so uh, we're gonna all as a profession, we have agreed that we're gonna be uh, more sensitive, we're gonna look deeper, we're gonna be more understanding of the, the challenges that students have faced. And this doesn't just impact students that are going on to 2021. Yeah. This is gonna impact the intake for 2022, 2023, 2024, because uh, the spring of 2020 is gonna, it, it impacts four years of classes, and, uh, you know, the class of 20 through 23. So we will, we will take that into consideration throughout the next four years of our reads. The other thing is for students, you know, there's the essay is going to be particularly important this year. Okay. Um, as we, you know, we have not been able to have the opportunity to meet as many students. So the essay will be a great opportunity in the supplemental essay. A lot of colleges have the why is Marist good for you or or something like that. Take advantage of that as a way to to communicate what you know about the institution and why you feel you may be a good match for, for that institution. College is going to be different based on all the factors that students are dealing with and the resilience that students are coming to the table, the academic table, the classrooms in their lives. I mean, I'm just so heartened by by this and I, and I know you are as well and working yeah. with students all the time, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's actually pretty interesting to watch students change and adjust to the environment around them uh, and students do it much better than uh, old people like you and I, Rob. Yeah, I t totally <laughs> hear that. <laughs> I could not let you go before we ask these final questions here. Um, what is the reopening plan for um, for students? Is it different for first year students or seniors as we've heard from some other schools, but please do give us your guidance. Sure, well, we are offering students the opportunity to come here to campus, but they also yeah. have the opportunity to study online. So okay. students are gonna have the option either way and they're gonna be able to find uh, whatever way is most comfortable for them and our job is to help them in that process. Um, the academic experience will be different. Uh, now we don't have any huge lecture halls, that's not what we are. We're, we have a lot of small classes but in some classrooms we're not going to be able to have every single student in that classroom and so half the class might be uh, watching on video from their residence hall while half the class is in the, in the classroom and in the next meeting they switch. Um, you know I think there's not going to be athletics on campus at least in the fall things are gonna be different, 
but yeah. we're still a residential place. And I think often students, actually it's really parents, parents say, well, this is not the way college is supposed to be. College is supposed to be football games and this right. and that. And the reality is, is that's what the parents' college experience was. And the class of 2020 and 2021 and into the future, they make their college experience. And so they're going to develop their leadership and they're going to get their academic uh, pursuits in maybe a different way or a different manner. They're going to make lifelong friends. Maybe instead of meeting them at the big football game, they're going to meet them in a more intimate setting in a, a you know, three or four or five people hanging out. So yeah. it's going to be different, but it's still going to be life changing and transformative. How would you advise? So now going fast forward to the, the fall entering class of 2021 and beyond, how, how would you advise them to get to know Marist now, uh, given you know these virtual times and and uh, you know what what are the place what are the things that are in place? Sure. Well, one of the things that Marist, as well as many colleges, if not most have done is really ramped up our virtual offerings for high school students. So there's okay. plenty of opportunities to learn about schools. Schools have added virtual tours and additional video content and webinars about this, that, and the other thing. And so you have the ability to learn incredible amount about different schools. And so I think that's a real benefit for students that where travel might be a challenge or, or uh, whatever challenges you may have, time, you're too busy, uh, with, with different things or working or whatever you're going to be doing, yeah. um, you're going to have some more flexibility in that regard. Long-term effects of COVID. This is on the mind of so many of our students at Princeton Review. Uh, what do you think some soothsaying there? What's going to happen over the next year? How's it going to affect it or year or more? Well, I think it's, I mean, I think it's going to change our society in a lot of ways, quite frankly. Um, and education is not immune to that. Uh, but I also think it's an opportunity. Uh, one of the things that, uh, as you get older in life, you realize things are always changing. You must adapt to yeah. the changing landscape, either in your job or in your family or whatever's happening. And the students that are going off to college now, they had to adapt really quickly to a radical situation. So that's that's a benefit for them. I mean, I think that uh, virtual experiences is going to be different um, and it's going to be in some ways better. So, you know, being able to embrace a virtual environment, you can bring in speakers from New York City or Paris or Hong Kong or Texas or wherever that maybe some faculty didn't think about in, in the past. Um, mm -hmm. There's a collaboration there where you can bring different viewpoints from, from different perspectives much easier. Um, learning doesn't have to be necessarily during that hour and a half that you're in class on Tuesday. It, it can be spread out over a longer period of time. So will education change? Yes, but yeah. I also think education can be more effective in this time of transformation. Last question for you, my friend. Um, for those students who are thinking of applying for, for fall of next year, just advice for those students uh, for this unique admission cycle as it comes up for that fall entering class 2021. My advice is exhale, relax. Yeah. <laughs> you still have a lot of control in this. You have the ability to learn about these schools these schools are understanding of your circumstances, and this is your chance to write your chapter in the COVID book. So write the chapter how you wanna write it uh, and take advantage of those opportunities. Um, and uh, we're here to help colleges and universities, both the admission side and on the financial aid side, particularly for the parents, we're here to help you navigate the next year to two years of your life as you figure out where you're gonna be going off to college. Thank you for, for that guidance. I know our students, many students and families and counselors that watch this, uh, you know, our videos at Princeton Review, and I'm so grateful for your time and spending with us uh, today. And we'll, we'll be back in contact in the fall and maybe we do this again. I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much, Rob, for having me. Good to see you. Bye -bye. Take care.